Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house as we gather together for worship on this, the first Sunday of Advent. We begin a new church here, and so many times we even go out go and say, Happy New Year, because uh, we're, church is always a little bit ahead of the curve with the rest of the world, despite what it looks like. Uh, to the contrary, we start our, our new year of celebration beginning uh, now with, looking, with this time of looking ahead. We begin the liturgical church year over again, celebrating the advent, the coming of Christ for us. We remember Jesus entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, especially as we look at our gospel reading for today. The shouts of the people remain our confession of faith year in and year out. Lord, save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, save us. That's what that word Hosanna means, is Lord, save us. Today we celebrate the blessed sacrament of Holy Communion, in which we recognize the true body and blood of Christ given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Uh, please be sure that you have read, you understand, and you agree with our communion policy printed inside the front cover of your bulletins um, if, uh, um, if you wanted to, to participate. Um, also, knowing that even if you don't, aren't going to be receiving Holy Communion, you may still come forward with your arms crossed uh, in front of me and I will give you a blessing. Uh, so you can still come forward if you want to uh, for that. Today we also celebrate the rite of confirmation for two of our youth, Aiden Harris and Colin Harris. We've been going through the Bible and Luther's small catechism for the last two years, and it is a blessing to be here and share with them as they are confirmed in their faith. Please remember to leave uh, the hymnal that you're using down on the pew after service so that we can uh, wipe them down before uh, restocking them. Uh, what other announcements do we have that we need to be brought to our attention? Yes, Nancy. In honor of um, our confirmants, um, they have brought cookies, which are individually in Ziploc bags, to um, the congregation and them to celebrate this day. Ooh, cookies. <laughs> I just looked up. They, whoever made them did a wonderful job. Um, and also, we now have the giving tree up. You saw it. It's now in, ready for Christmas. It's for group and social services. They give me a couple items that it's okay to bring. So the list is in your mailbox, but if you'd rather give cash or Kroger gift card, that would be greatly appreciated. It makes it easier that they can easily replace items that they don't get in. They just want the Kroger's real quick and get back, and so on. And the last one is the seminary students. Yes, their baskets are still back here. Um, I hope to be able to get them out of here by the end of this week. So if you didn't bring your stuff and so on, you want to bring it by the church sometime this week, great. Probably on Saturday, everything will be gone so I can get that out to them. Okay, thank you for those. Anything else needs to be brought to our attention? Yes, Bob. Yeah, we put the markers out in the parking lot to aid the snow plowing people. Uh, watch out for them. The one on the front corner seems to be problematic once in a while. So, watch when you're coming in and out of the parking lot, so you don't, you don't, you know, scrape your car on all those things that we got there. So, I mean, at, the, at, at least, at least we're in Ohio instead of Wisconsin where I was before. Because, you know, the nice thing about Ohio for winter is snow comes and it goes away. I mean, it comes and it goes away. In Wisconsin, snow comes. And then more comes, and then more comes, and it just builds up all, all, all winter long. So it's nice to be in a place where it comes and goes away. Okay, was that it? Any other announcements? Not saying anything? Okay. Our order for worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 1, that begins on page 151 of your hymnals. But first, we begin this morning with singing together our opening hymn, number 331 in your hymnals. The Advent of Our King, number 331. Please rise. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro for this day is from Psalm 25, it's found printed inside your bulletins. And we proclaim our Detroit response. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed of him. Let, me, let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lead in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. 
that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Sunday of Advent has a candle, and each candle has been traditionally assigned a meaning that is appropriate for the Advent season. The first candle of our Advent wreath is called the Prophecy Candle. As we begin this Advent season, we are reminded that the coming of the Christ is the fulfillment of God's prophetic word. Even in the darkness of life's chaos and confusion, the light of God's promise shines forth brightly. The prophecy candle assures us that in the coming of Jesus Christ, our God does keep his word. Behold, your king is coming to you, 
lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue now with sharing our Christian faith together, using the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue now with singing together hymn number 332, Savior of the Nations Come. Number 332.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this first Sunday of Advent is our Old Testament reading in Jeremiah chapter 23. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called, the Lord our Righteousness. Jeremiah says that the Lord shall no longer be known as the one who brought the people out of Egypt, but instead shall be known as the Lord our Righteousness. The chief event in the earthly life of Aden and Calm was their birth. The chief event in their spiritual life was their baptism. Up until now, they have been learning and growing in the faith taught to them by their mother, and the rest of their family and faith here in Corinth, as well as from other Christians in their life. Today, however, we will celebrate, celebrate the fact that their faith is their own. Jesus Christ is the one whom they confess as Lord and God. The chief event in the history of Israel had been the Exodus. Now Israel had other important events. They rejoiced in creation, at the call of Abraham. They celebrated Noah and his deliverance from the flood. But the great event, that which gave birth to them as a nation and made them God's people, was the slaughter of the Passover lamb, which spared them from the angel of death. The passage through the birth canal of the Red Sea on dry ground that delivered them from enslavement and the leading of the pillar of cloud by day and fire by night that led to the giving of the law on Sinai. That was it. The change that God gives through Jeremiah of his self-description from the Lord who brought us out of the land of Egypt over to the Lord our righteousness indicates that the Exodus was not the chief event for the people of Israel any longer. It was only a foreshadowing of what God would do. It was a type, but it was not the fulfillment. Greater things were coming. God had not left Israel to itself from then on. In the first place, he would bring the people out of exile. But that too would be a type. So he does not say that the Lord's name will be changed, will change from the Lord who brought us out of the land of Egypt to the Lord who brought us back from captivity. No, instead, his name will be the Lord our righteousness. In this day and age, we now live in the days when the types have all been fulfilled. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, crucified and raised in Jerusalem. Rather than circumcision, we have the fulfillment in the sacrament of baptism. Rather than the Passover and the sacrifices, we have the Holy Communion. Jesus Christ, God in human flesh, is the Lord, our righteousness. In Him, Judah is saved and Israel dwells securely. The kingdom has been reunited and restored. And the throne is returned to the house of David. But this is not a political kingdom. But instead, an eternal kingdom. Judah and Israel are no longer defined by their lineage back to Jacob. 
but instead by their faith in the Christ, the Messiah, long foretold. The one who is the priest in the order of Melchizedek. I love that name, Melchizedek. It's a name that literally means the king of righteousness. Anyway, this one in the order of Melchizedek has offered himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the world and has made a people of those who were not a people. He is the lamb. He is the pillar. He is the fulfillment of the law. And he's more. He is our righteousness. Therefore, we no longer say he is the Lord who brought us out of Egypt. We say, as the Lord lives, he has brought us from the ends of the earth. He has gathered us by his death on the cross and made us his people by declaring us righteous. By taking our sin and our punishment upon himself and giving us the credit for his righteousness. He makes that trade willingly, unfairly, but wondrously for us. The central event in the history of the universe, not just Israel, not even just Earth, but of the entirety of the cosmos is the sacrifice of the Son to reconcile humanity and the rest of creation along with it back to the Father. All of his other acts, every fiber of goodness in creation, either echo or foreshow and deliver this. Thus, St. Paul simply says, we preach Christ crucified. Everything comes from that. For to preach Christ crucified is to preach the exodus and the captivity and the fulfillment of God's word. We stand today at the beginning of a new church here. It does not begin with Jesus in Bethlehem. It begins with Jesus riding into town toward the cross. Advent is not a time that's getting us ready for Christmas or even for Easter. Advent is getting us ready for the Lord's coming in glory and judgment. And we get ready for that by receiving him here and now in his word and in his sacrament. He will come in terrors on the last day. He will come to judge the nations. But it will not be a terror to us. To us it will be a joy and a delight. Because he is our righteousness. He does not come to punish us for our sins. He comes to deliver to us the reward that he earned for us. He is our righteousness. He is our rescuer. He has died in order to make us his. He has substituted himself for us and then declared us righteous just as he is righteous. He will come in a similar way as he came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Not riding on the back of a donkey, but driven by his love and his desire to have you as his own. That is why today, as always, we pray, Hosanna, Lord, save us. We also pray, come Jesus, come quickly. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus.
We continue now with singing together our offertory stand beginning on the bottom of page 159. What shall I render to the Lord? Please rise. Confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the Scriptures, as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true. Do you intend to hear the Word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to God's Word and in faith, word, and deed? To remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death. Do you intend 
to continue steadfast in this confession of church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be. Verses Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verses Galatians 2, verse 20. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew them in the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receive his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of resurrection of their bodies to life and more. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you.
to welcome as our newest confirmed community members of the Concordia Lutheran Church. Go back to this. Please rise as we come before our Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. To you, O Lord, we lift up our souls, and in you we put our trust. Do not let us be ashamed of our hope, but come quickly. Sustain us by your Holy Spirit, that we may have joy at the advent of Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, awaken your saints from sleep and idleness as we enter another church year. Encourage the preachers of your word and all who hear, for salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Give boldness and faithfulness to Matthew, our synod president, Kevin, our district president, Richard, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Renew the faith and quicken the love of all Christians to cast off the works of darkness. Put on Jesus Christ and live as children of the eternal day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Preserve and bless all Christian households, that husbands and wives would live in love and service to each other, that fathers and mothers would diligently bring up their children in your fear, and that children would honor their parents and be well equipped for service to their neighbors in this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, be with the governing authorities and enable them to preserve peace and order in our nation. Hear our prayers for Donald, our president, Michael, our governor, Christina, our mayor, our military and police, and other civil servants as well as all newly elected officials. Especially as we pray for our local law enforcement and Lance, Thomas, Corey, John, and Emily in our sheriff's office. Increase the spirit of unity and cooperation among the people of our land and the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, behold in mercy all who are in danger, trouble, sickness, or need. Hear our prayers for the sick and suffering. Especially do we pray for Mary, Jim, Patricia, Linda, and their ongoing needs. Mark, Barbara, Tony, and Mara, and their afflictions. And all those we remember now in our hearts. Give health to our world and bring the pandemic to an end. Comfort all who mourn and sustain them with a confident hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all blessing, we offer thanksgiving for the blessings you give to us, rejoicing in all your gifts of life, especially all those celebrating birthdays, as well as Gordon and Glenn and all those celebrating anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, as your Son once entered humbly into Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, so send him to us, according to his promise in the Holy Sacrament, that we may eat his body and drink his blood in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of our sins and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now on page 160 with the service of the Sabbath. The Lord be with you.
that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart now in peace. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. 